Hello. We're going to take a look in this lesson at building a one-page website. So I felt that it was important for us early on to get our hands dirty, if you like, and build a simple site, even if it's just a one-page website. This way, all of the introductory material that we presented and a little bit of theory helps you understand hands-on how to put your first site together. Of course we're going to go back in subsequent lessons and get much deeper into the more advanced aspects. But hopefully you're going to have fun with this lesson. So I'm going to demonstrate in these PowerPoints the steps that you need to carry out and then you'll have a, a lab as well as a demo showing you what you need to do. So what we look at here is starting a new website, what we need to do, designing the web form itself. We'll talk about source and split view. We touched on this very briefly in the Visual Studio demonstration. We'll get into that a little bit more detail here. We'll talk about adding some basic validation to our form and how we go about adding code and then testing the web application. So when you open Visual Studio and select File New Website, you will see the Website dialog box as shown here. You have three choices for the location of your website. File System, HTTP, which assumes that you have Internet Information Services installed, or FTP. However, the simplest choice is file system because not many developers have IIS installed, so we're going to recommend that you stay with that choice, and that's what we'll be using throughout all of our demonstrations here. So as we said earlier, what we need to do is we need to launch Visual Studio. So once you've launched Visual Studio from the start menu, then we're going to select File and New Website, as shown here in this diagram, in this screenshot. The New Website dialog box appears. We choose ASP.NET website, which is already pre-selected, so that is the default choice. And then we're going to enter a name for our site. You can put this any way that you like on your machine. So if you want to click on the Browse button next to the drop-down, choose a different location. Usually I will create a folder under the C drive, in this case, as you can see. ASP.NET demos and then my website name, whatever I happen to call that website. It's important to understand a little bit about the Solution Explorer. So Solution Explorer shows the structure of your application. What it's showing you are the folders that are in your application, the files, and the web configuration file. Notice when you hit the plus sign on the default.aspx page, it expands the view, and as shown on the right-hand screenshot, you will then see the code file, default.aspx.vb if you're writing a VB program, c -sharp if you're writing in c -sharp, and that shows you the, the code file right there in Solution Explorer. So usually I'll spend most of my time in Solution Explorer manipulate the web pages, look at the code view, and so forth. Just to give a, an explanation as to the different components of Visual Studio, so on the left-hand side, when you open your website, you'll see the toolbox. We talked about this in the demonstration of Visual Studio, so it has all of the components that you need, such as the buttons, text boxes, labels, and so on. 
the middle section is important. This is the designer. So this is where you're going to add your add your layout and you have three different views now in Visual Studio 2008. You can either have the design view, the split view, or the source view. So you click on those buttons at the bottom of the Visual Studio screen. We talked about Solution Explorer so that it by default appears on the right hand side and then on the bottom right hand corner is a properties window that displays properties for each of the controls. Here we're showing you what we did to build our very first web form. So remember that the web designer uses flow layouts. Controls are placed left to right and top to bottom. This is kind of not ideal because it's very difficult for you to control the positioning. There's a reason why it's done this way. Because a web browser can be resized by the user to any size, either very large or very small, or somewhere in between, then flow layout automatically moves the controls in the browser window so they are at the right size. However, it's hard for you to, to control the layout, so that's the downside of flow layout. What you can use is a much better way, which is to use tables. The easiest way to insert a table is to select the table menu at the top of the menu menu bar, select insert table, and in our example we're going to choose five rows and two columns. You can choose whatever settings you want for the tables. Once you've done this, now you have a grid or cells inside the table and you drag and drop labels, text boxes, and buttons into the cells of the table so the form looks much more organized. Things are lined up much better. So here I've got my title for my section, my personal contacts at the, in the top left hand cell. And then I've got category name, email and phone and a couple of buttons that I've added there. And then a drop down list on the right hand side next to category and then three text boxes. So pretty simple to lay, lay out a page once you have the table structure added. For each control we need to set a valid name for the controls ID and a display value for the buttons. You could just use text box 1, button 1, etc. But this is not a good practice. It's hard to maintain code if everything is just text box 1 and you don't know what that is related to. Much better is to call it text box, first name, last name and so on so that it's obvious what they, that control is about. When we select a control you'll notice in the screenshot we have the drop down list selected. You know it's selected because you have the little white squares around the control so these are called handles. Now when we look in the property window we can see that at the top it says DDL contact category. This is the ID or the name of the control. This is what I've typed in there. Just on, on a side note, you always know what the developer has done in the properties window because the properties that he's changed are bolded. So I can see that the ID is in bold, so this must have been changed from the default.